Hello, welcome to IT Security Labs. And today we're just going to continue building our home lab where we'll be learning cybersecurity skills. Last time we ended up here where we uploaded our ISO files, Windows, Ubuntu, SendOS, and Security Onion. In today's video, we're going to go ahead and install Windows Server 2012. This is going to be our very first Windows machine. And in this machine, we're going to be installing a domain controller. So if you're brand new on this channel, we are building this lab for learning in-demand cybersecurity skills. And today we're going to be installing Windows Server 2016. We're going to set up a static IP address for this Windows Server. Then we'll run some updates to make sure that our machine is up to date. Then we'll install Active Directory users and computers. So what is this Active Directory that we're going to be ending up installing and why Windows, right? So you work for a company called Trevor Phillips Industries. They asked you to set up an Active Directory environment. And you also need to make sure that it's going to be monitored for security. So what is Active Directory? It is a collection of services on a Windows Server machine that we can install. And we use these services to manage identity for, for our employees and also resources on the network. So if we wanted to give people access on the network, we use, for example, domain services, which is going to be where we join computers that are owned by the company and also we create user accounts so when you go to work that's why a company gives you a company email address with account login and everything using active directory domain services that's what we're going to be installing today we also have federation services for external uh, resources then we also have certificate services so if you are running a certificate authority on your system we have the lightweight directory services so for applications then uh, we also have right management services for security controls so that's what we have for active directory so without wasting time let's go ahead and install our windows machine then i'll show you what domain services look like then we can create some users and actually install the whole system so let's get started here so coming back here first thing that we need to do is Last time I showed you in our previous video, so if you haven't watched that, make sure to go ahead and do that. We installed, we uploaded our ISO files. So we have our ISOs here and we have our Windows Server 2016 right here. So that's what we're going to be installing. If you go to virtual machines, you already see that I have one machine that already exists, but I'm going to show you how to create this. So go ahead and say create VM, new virtual machine and next. Then name, this is going to be our domain controller. So name it DC. In this case, I'm naming this one DC02. I like to name 0102 because if you have multiple domain controllers, then you can do this. In this case, I'm going to have two domain controllers that are going to be replicating to each other. So depending on how you want, you can just have one and it will work. So that is good. For here, it's Windows. It's Windows Server 2016. 64 bit and then next and next uh, for CPUs I'm going to give it four CPUs and I'm going to give it eight giga gigs of RAM and then on the hard drive I want you to have 100 gigs then for network adapter, I'm leaving it on the VM machine. And for CD, I'm going to connect to my data store, which is the one that we used last time. ISO, Windows Server 2016, select, and next, finish. So this machine is going to be created. If you look down here, you see that we have some progress going on and the machine is going to be created for us. And it's done. So let's go ahead and power it on, start the machine and you get a, then you just hit enter to boot from CD. So if you go here to where it says console, you can launch in a new tab. It will open it to the console in a new tab, which is nice. And in this case, it's saying it's timed out and there we go. It's loading. So I just clicked on these three lines here. Not sure why that is to happen. Normally it doesn't happen like that. All right, so now we say next. That's the first part that we get. And install now. So this is just going to go through the normal installation for Windows Server. And we downloaded our Windows Server 
ISO so we know what we're doing here. So let's give it some time and I will save us time by pausing here. All right, now once it gets here, I want to install my Windows Server 2016 standard with desktop experience. That's what I have, that's what I have a license for. And then next, I actually don't know whether the license that I have is data center or standard, so it's easier to install a lower version of the Windows then upgrade it in the terminal and I'll show you how I, I'll activate mine here. So just accept that, go to custom, then choose your drive and next. And this will take a while. This is going to start the installation process for Windows and all that stuff. And give this some time. Grab, grab a coffee. Maybe subscribe to my channel right now. And give me a thumbs up. Then you can come back and you'll see what was happening here. All right. During the installation, you can see that we get some activity on our storage network here showing that we are writing some stuff to our storage, which is awesome. So just stay patient here as this go process goes through and I'll see you when it's done. So if all goes well, you'll see this saying it's getting ready. And again, this will take a little bit longer. All right, so after a while, you'll be asked to enter a password for the administrator account. So make sure to make this password as secure as possible. In this case, you want to disable this account when you're done it anyway. All right, it's applying the changes and we're here. So let's go ahead and send, uh, let's say install VMware tools first. This is going to mount the VMware tools for ISO file on our des desktop and control out delete. I'm thinking about Linux, not on the desktop, but on the machine. Then enter the password that you entered. So now we're getting in. So first thing is let's enter our VMware tools. This is going to allow us to do copy and paste and all that stuff. And to install VMware tools, let's go here. Let's just open any of these. File Explorer. And as you can see, it's connected to the internet. That means our lab network is working. And here is our VMware Tools DVD. Double click there. I think, was it the setup or auto run? Now let's run the setup 64. Preparing installation. And then it will launch. Preparing to install. We're just installing VMware tools. Uh, typical is good. Install. So the screen is going to blink a couple of times as this VMware tools is installed. And the most important thing that we want is copy and paste to be able to copy things from our machine to the VMware machine. All right, so it says complete the VMware tool setup, finish. And as you can see, it says the system needs to restart, so yes. So it's just restarting the system. When it comes, the screen is going to be full. That's pretty much it. All right, it rebooted. So let's go ahead and send our keys, control out, delete. Our password. All right. So it looks like we are back in here. And first order of business, let's make sure we check our IP configuration. In our um, DHCP server here, we reserved, we said our range was 192.168.30.10 to 192.168.245. Let's reduce this to say two to 199 then from 200 will be our servers so let's save that then we can come here and give this server its network ip address so if you right click there properties because this is a domain controller we don't want it to be getting dhcp ip addresses this is going to be stuck so we give it a static ip dot 38 
200. And since we own our DHCP, we told our DHCP not to give away 200, so we know there will not be any conflicts. And then default gateway here is going to be 192.168.38.1. And DNS server, we wanted to use it itself. And then we can also point it to our PFSense. And let's validate that and OK. The reason why we're pointing to itself because this is going to end up being our DNA server. So that's why we want it to be that. Then we have a PFSense as our backup. So if this is all well, this a little error here will go away like that. So we know we are good. So you need to set up a static IP on your system. All right, so we can close that. So we set up our static IP address and we installed then right now let's add our roles and features and set up our active directory like we said. So first thing is add roles and features. Uh, no, 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 no. Add roles and features. Next. Role based installation. Yes. Next. This is the only server that we have. But this reminds me. Let's cancel this. Let's change the system name as well. While we are still here so i click here this is my shortcut then right click properties then i want to change the name from this to dc02 so change settings you can see say dc here but the one that we want to change is the name and i want to name this dc02 let's leave it on the work group for now but that's what we want to do so okay Okay, this is going to ask us that it needs to restart. Yes, let's restart the machine. So now we have a static IP address and we renamed this machine. Now we can go ahead and install our XG directory services and features. So what I, what's going to happen here is that this machine is going to be the very first domain controller in this active directory forest. And then it's also going to join this machine to its to the domain by itself. So let me show you. So add roles and features. Okay, let's give it a minute. Let's try again. All right, let's give it a minute to initialize. It doesn't like to be too quick. All right, so add roles. So come here and say add roles and features. Next, row based. That's next. DC with our static IP address here. So that's good. Okay, so right here we want to add Active Directory Domain Services right here. And this is going to do that. And while we're there, let's add the lightweight services, add features. Um, we're not going to add DH DHCP and DNS right now. I will show you how to configure them in the next video. So this is going to be fine for now. Let's go ahead and say next. And this .NET is usually required, so that's good. Say next, next, and next. Install. So this is going to install our Active Directory services that we chose. Okay, this is also going to take a long time, so be patient here and let it do its course. And when it's done, we'll come back. All right, so while it's installing here, it's still working on it. Let's go ahead and promote this machine to a domain controller. Since it's the very first domain controller in this domain, let's go ahead and promote it to a domain controller here. And here is where you need to make a decision. Remember, our company name is Trevor Phillips Industries. And so I'm going to name my domain tpi.local. So this could be any name that you want for your lab so if your name is thomas you can say thomas.local this is the company name dot something uh, usually some people say dot com here uh, but for me i'm just being safe if tpi exists on the internet i don't want there to be any problems so i'm saying tpi.local here and then select the deployment add a domain control to an existing domain no we don't have an existing domain so we need to add a new forest so it's tpi local that's the root name 
and you want a password so let's put a password here so it says the delegation for this dns server cannot be created because authorities depends on cannot be found okay let's just say yes for now because we didn't enable dns on this system so let's just say next when we come back we enable dns and you'll see what i'm talking about here need bios name is going to be tpi next and this is good everything here we're just leaving to the default uh, we can view the script in fact i want to keep this script let's save it to the desktop was that's our settings you use that for documentation just in case this domain controller dies you need to have some documentation somewhere so we can bring it back up and that's going to help us there all right so all the prerequisites checks passed even though we don't have dns here let's go ahead and install so again this is going to install uh, everything here that we need give it a mi few minutes and we'll come back and when it's done it says you're about to be signed out okay let's close that close close and restart so this is a simple process as you can see all right so it restarted let's go and check our system and find out what's happening in there what is really happening can do we really have um all right so, so as you can see tpi administrator tpi is in trevor phillips industries so our password for administrator that we set up and we are in now we're signing into a domain controller so this is a domain controller we can now create users in here and we can create groups of users and i'll show you right now check out our active directory first we have a, an error here all right so if you go to tools active directory these things are now here so let's go to active directory users and computers we're going to do two things if you expand here this is going to be our tree uh, in the users section we're going to create one user and make them an administrator we already have an administrator here so, so let's create another one if you right click here you can say new then you can say user and first name this is our user that we're going to be using and logo name is Elma Conem at tpi.local as you can see and we can say next give them a password and confirm usually you want the user to change the password and not next login but we're not do, doing that let's say for now password never expires we want the passwords to expire after four to five days for that we'll create group policy objects later in this course but for now let's just say next then finish and then on this user if we go to properties let's add to a group as administrators okay so this person is now added to global administrators so this is a trusted backup administrator account then we can disable this and this one will be good so we're good here and then we also have a computers object here so if we join any other computers they will show up here here in the domain controllers here this is the domain controller so we have successfully installed active directory so if you have any users we can create them in here you want to be more organized so you might want to create folders for users i'll show you we can automatically create a bunch of users in here but for now we have a successful domain controller I hope we find value in this and if you do please subscribe in the next video i'll show you how to add a second dom domain controller we can even add our pfsense in virtual in vmware and this more so please remember to like and subscribe and as you can see we are learning step by step i will see you next time